got a river of light flowing down from me. Consolation to walk and the blind to see. Oh, open these and go take a dive to see. I've got a river of light flowing down from me.
Jesus, Jesus, your name is like God. Your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I
Father, we say thank you for tonight. God, we're so grateful, Lord, for your great presence. Lord, we love you. Father, thank you for your fellowship, God. What a privilege to be able to walk and talk with you, God. What a joy to fellowship with you, God. Lord, we do earnestly desire to know you more, God. We want to know all about your heart. God, we want to know you. We want to feel what you feel. We want to see what you see. God, we're asking, Lord, that you truly would. Lord, give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. God, we ask it knowing you said whatever we ask according to your will we could have. So we receive it with joy. (laughs) 
Thank you, God. Lord, open up our hearts. Lord, we humble ourselves before you and say, Lord, your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And Lord, you said we could ask and receive. So Lord, we want to know more. We want to understand, Lord, the riches of your glorious inheritance. We, are, we want to know you, God. God, we want to know you. I thank you for the privilege of being able to experience you, God. Thank you for your presence, Lord. You are our pleasure. You are our joy. God, you are our delight. And we honor you. We worship you tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I'm conscious that uh, it's a week night, and we've got tomorrow night and Saturday with uh, Brian, and then Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock, which is going to be really glorious. And all day Saturday, and Saturday night at Outbreak. And uh, so we love to worship God in this place. But we are really excited uh, to uh, just dig in and deeper into what the Lord is revealing through His Word. Who has a copy of the Passion Translation of, of some form? Oh, you need to do yourself a favor. I tell you, when Brian first released uh, the Song of Songs, he, if, for those of you who don't know, uh, Brian and Candice have been um, working on a, tr a translation of the Bible. Now, they've not just decided to do this. God commissioned them to do this with a, an incredible holy encounter. Uh, they themselves have been missionaries in Panama for many, many years. They did a translation, uh, were involved in a translation there for the Kuna people uh, and, um, and have pastored a huge... Uh, church over in Connecticut and a whole network of churches have, have done so much but have they've their heart's desire is just to reveal God to see him manifested and we're seeing that come about through this passion translation and when I first got a copy he started with the song of songs who's got song of songs in uh, in the passion translation well you know I'm going on about this translation but we read an English version of another language remember that so if you're a bit pedantic about your particular translation. I'm sorry to tell you it was not actually written originally in the King James. <laughs> sorry to burst your bubble. But actually, it was written in the Greek, it was written in the Hebrew, the Aramaic, and the Greek. And, um, and uh, Brian has just been really gifted to really bring out the dynamic, particularly of uh, in the Song of Songs of the Hebrew language. It's just, ah, it's just beautiful. And for the first time ever, the book actually made sense to me as a whole. Previously, I'd read, I'd read Song of Songs and I'd get bits and pieces out of it where I'd go, yeah, I understand that and I understand that, but the rest of it was a bit strange, a bit icky and a bit strange, you know, <laughs> like uh, hair like a flock of goats and, you know, neck like a tower. I, I saw someone actually do a picture of what that bride would look like. <laughs> she was ugly. But when, but Brian is really just bringing out the truth that, you know, G Jesus spoke in parables. This is who God is. And, and the, the Song of Songs, for the first time in my life, suddenly made sense to me as a whole book, as Christ relating to his bride. And uh, I really encourage you to do yourself a favor and get it. It just makes sense, suddenly makes sense as the Spirit of God speaks. And what I really appreciate about, appreciate about these guys is, I feel like I get an impartation for interpretation just listening to them. Because I go home and I read and I just begin to see things I've not seen before. He, he shared last night about the four different levels of interpretation that you can see things on one level, but it's so multi-layered and oh, it's delicious. But he, he also has the, the, um, just the gift to really have had experience with the language so that, for example, in... Um, in Psalms, where we'd read just things, I, I love Psalm 23, three. He, he, he brings it out in such a way that you suddenly understand it in, the, in, in such a, a fresh beauty. He'll say things like, I think Psalm 23 says, um, fear will not conquer me for you already have. Uh, yeah. It just really captures the poetry of it. Or like Psalm 38, where it says normally, I think, you hear my groans. He's looked at the Hebrew word and recognized that it means interprets. And he's, he's looked at the dynamic of the language. And, I, you know, I sound like I'm an expert on your translation there. But, um, 
And, and he's got the verse and rendered it like this. My tears are liquid words and you can read them all. And you go, oh, that's something I can take with me on my walk. As God is listening to me, he interprets my tears. My tears are liquid words and he can read them all. It, it just delights me that God is so rich and so magnificent. And then we've recently just had uh, the book of Luke and uh, the letters from heaven, which is some, not all of Paul's letters, but just some of Paul's letters. Uh, and just even looking at the footnotes, as he's really relied on, um, also on the Aramaic texts, which people are telling us now is the, um, actually the original language that much of the New Testament was written in. Uh, it's just exciting. It's really rich and, and glorious. So uh, we're going to really enjoy him tonight. I think someone's going to come and we're going to receive an offering. I think it's Pastor Warren. Come on up and we're going to have the opportunity just to bless these guys. They have come to us without any charge, without any request. They just come as servants of God and we get to feast. And so we, we want to take the opportunity to really bless them. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Who was blessed last night? I was, that's for sure. And we're going to get blessed again tonight. And you know... You know, I was thinking about how important it is today to have revelation in the Word of God. You know, we can talk about, <clears throat> you know, getting prosperous in, in money and, and buildings and assets and all that. But the greatest prosperity of all that you can ever get is the revelation of God's Word up here. There's no greater, you can't put a price on the revelation of peace. You cannot put a price on the revelation of understanding how to receive a miracle. You can't put a price on the understanding of his great love for you and then your love for others. And these are revelations that are far more valuable than silver and gold, that are eternal. See, if I get a revelation of his love and I'm loving other people, I take that to heaven with me. Hey, heaven is love. It's eternal. So the deeper I can get a revelation of God's love for me and my love for one another, the deeper I am in understanding and its great value. It's the greatest value of all, revelation. And we know that Brian and Candace have great teaching from the Word of God. There will be lots and lots of revelation being spoken out tonight. And it's up to us to capture that revelation. And as we capture that revelation, we ourselves go to another level of value of understanding, of supernatural strength, of being more in the victory. And so we all know that he has spent a lot of time writing four books and also translating the Bible. And therefore, Brian has a wealth of knowledge in this area. And the Bible tells us that we're to... We're to, uh, what is it, the labourer is worthy of his hire. Or, or don't muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. And so here we have today the opportunity to give to Brian and Candace's ministry so that it's furthered throughout the world. So that they can spread the great news of the gospel and the revelation of God's word to other people so they too can grow in this great revelation of God's word. And so let's just give tonight. And let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to give to this ministry, to bless them. And Lord, that they will be able to go on further from this church to many churches because they have been looked after financially here and we just thank you father god that you would place on each of our hearts how much to give and lord we give that with a glad heart knowing that the right amount will serve for the right purpose and we just praise you for that in jesus wonderful name 
Amen. So, uh, Catherine, do you want to just... Don't forget everybody. Catherine's birthday tomorrow. Shh, shh. Thank you. I'll be nearly a grown-up. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, I'm looking for something. It's, it's much easier if you've got it in the actual book. Hallelujah. I, um, I've been so blessed reading through these letters from heaven. It's just been, it's just been so lovely. But I was just going to um, read to you just a little taste, uh, that just, uh, just reading from Galatians, which I just think is so beautiful. Hallelujah. Ooh, what can I read? Something good. I, I've, I've been so blessed just to you know, see the delight that God has put in their hearts for the Word of God. And, you know, Brian and Candace have such an extraordinary ministry. They can prophesy the power of God comes. We have people in this church that ha were healed last time you were here and miracles. We've people, you've been in churches where the, the fire of God is manifested literally and burnt a hole in the back wall. I mean, like, <laughs> extraordinary stuff. But I've actually asked um, Brian uh, and, and convinced him, God, God bless him, that we are really hungry to hear him teach. Um, you know, a lot of the time people are interested in, the in, in, you know, give me a word or give me this, give me that, and, and you know, praise God, it's wonderful. But I really feel that when we've got someone with such a revelation, such wealth of teaching, it's like my spirit just craves to be fed uh, with this word of God. And um, so I'm going to read something. What will I read? Thank you, Jesus. My hope was that they would agree with my grace message. And indeed, they did agree, affirming the truth of what I'd been teaching. They even accepted Titus without demanding that he follow strict Jewish customs um, before they would receive him as a brother. He goes on, and he, he, he talking about the grace gospel all the way through and just bringing out how the Spirit of God is, um, is, is just making it so clear to communicate to us the great message of the gospel. Where is it? Verse 19, I'm reading, I think, chapter something. Can't read it on here. It was when I tried to obey the law that I was condemned with a curse because I'm not able to fulfill every single detail of it. But because Christ lives in me, I now died to the Lord's dominion over me so that I can live for God in heaven's freedom. My old life was crucified with Christ and no longer lives, for I was fully united with him in his death. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine, for Christ lives his life through me. My real life is Christ. We live as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into mine. I just want to encourage you as you uh, feast tonight on what the Spirit of God has to say. I, I'd really encourage you to open your hearts and ask the Spirit of God to really give you a love for the Word of God. You know, we are, we are passionately in love with Jesus here in this place. We love him with all our heart. We, we, we just love what he's doing too. And every week people are getting saved and healed. And, but, you know, the glorious thing is as they're coming in to Christ, many of them not knowing that there's an Old and a New Testament, they just know nothing about the Bible. They're catching a hunger to read the Word of God, not with a, a religious obligation, but with a delight that it's like, oh, I'm discovering God on every page. So would you stand with me as we welcome uh, Brian Simmons to come and bless us with the Word of God. Give him a big hand. Thank you so much. Have a seat, everybody, and make sure tomorrow you bring a birthday card, and let's have a card shower for our beloved Pastor Catherine. She's actually turning 30 tomorrow, so it's really a, a milestone for her. So good to be with you. Thank you for joining us tonight. We want to welcome all those watching online, our friends in the U.S. and around Australia. God bless you. Uh, the Lord is going to really meet you tonight. I, I've had this vibration going on in my spirit. I'm feeling good vibrations. Me and the Beach Boys, we're really feeling it here tonight. But there, there's something really good that's going to come into your heart as you lay aside the religious know-it-all attitude that says, I have God figured out, I have 
Holy Spirit figured out. I have every single verse of the Bible figured out. And I think you and I know better, don't we? That we have to be taught by uh, the Lord Jesus himself. We're told in 1 John that we don't need a man to teach us, but the anointing that rests in us, the anointed one who lives in us, he is our teacher. So tonight we're going to uh, welcome the Holy Spirit to come and rip off the blinders and the scales from our eyes, not just to fill our head with more uh, teaching, but that somehow our hearts would be pierced. Truth always pierces the heart. If it doesn't pierce the heart, you haven't quite learned it yet. When my wife and I were missionaries with an indigenous people group, they had never heard the gospel in their own language. And here, uh, after a miracle conversion, earthquake, supernatural signs and wonders, our daughter was miraculously uh, spared from death uh, after being bitten by a two-meter long snake, a uh, poisonous snake, and uh, multiple miracles that happened. Our village got converted. A church was born. I'm starting to teach the church, and I decide to teach them Romans 12, 1 and 2, that by the mercies of God, we're to present our, our bodies as living sacrifices unto the Lord. And I taught for a, a considerable amount of time one evening on Romans 12, 1, and I said, uh, now, you take this home and you live it out and let it become part of you. The next night, they come, came into our hut and I said, I want to teach you Romans 12, 2. And they stopped me. They said, no. I said, why? I said, we're not living Romans 12, 1 yet. Don't teach us anything you don't see us living. When you see that we're living Romans 12, 1 as committed sacrifices laid down for you, Lord Jesus, then bring us more revelation. But don't teach us beyond what we experience in our life. I thought, wow, they're surely not Americans. <laughs> so I ended up teaching for weeks and weeks on Romans 12, 1. They memorized it. They were walking around talking about it. Of course, it was in their own language. Uh, not in English or Spanish. It was their own, their own tongue. But, but I think we need a dose of that, that whatever we hear tonight, whatever we learn tonight, that we would put it into practice, that we would experience it. God is to be experienced. God is not a theology that fits into your mind. What a very small place to put him. God is to be experienced. You take a drink out of a fire hydrant. It's like the dog that sticks his head outside the car window as you're flying down the highway and his ears are flopping. And blah, 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 blah. That's what it's like when the spirit of revelation comes. You get just a small portion. It's like drinking from that fire hydrant. So may the Lord anoint your ears tonight to hear as we share with you the mysteries of the new covenant. The new covenant reality. Before we came here to Australia, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was teaching like I am here tonight. And wherever I went in Australia, I was teaching the people the new covenant reality. That the old covenant has ended. It is a fading glory. But the new covenant is an increasing glory. The old covenant is from the outside in. The new covenant is from the inside out. And that the entire life of a Christian has to be that internal revelation, the internal manifestation of Christ in us, where we live out an ever-increasing glory. If it's external, it's religion. If it's burning within, it's the Holy Spirit and it's real. And I've had enough religion to last a couple of lifetimes. I could share mine with you if you want it. But I'd rather have this burning in my bones. Like Jeremiah said, it's burning in my bone marrow. It's, my DNA is percolating. I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving with the lamb. I'm moving in a realm that is God and not doctrines, not just teachings. So before I get started, I'm going to ask you and those of you online watching us as well, I want everybody to say it out of your out of your mouth tonight I don't know it all 
Matter of fact, I don't know much. But I want to learn from the Holy Spirit, who is my teacher. So, Lord, I release now the hearing ear, and let there be a voice inside of my voice that lives and burns and rests inside of the hearts of everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn, please, to Matthew 11. I'm sorry, Matthew 13, 11. And I just want to review quickly what we shared last night. Matthew 13, 11. It says, the knowledge of the mysteries. In some of your translations, it may say secrets. That's okay. Secrets, mysteries, kind of similar, isn't it? It's the word mysterion. The Greek word is mysterion, M-Y-S-T-E-R-I-O-N, mysterion. Now, the word mysterion occurs 27 times in the New Testament. 27. And I have looked at every single passage where this word occurs, and I've discovered, I believe by God, by the Lord's help, I've discovered 10 or 11 or so of the mysteries of heaven, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I'm going to share them with you, some tonight, perhaps some tomorrow. The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you. Everybody say, I already have them. I don't know it, but I already have them. You know, you have a lot that you don't know. You have a lot of blessings that you've never unpacked yet. You have gifts, fruit, power, and wisdom of the Holy Spirit, and you haven't unpacked it all. You've got just a little bit of it operating in your life, but the, the substance, the reality of it is all hidden in Christ, for Christ is our life, and in Him are hidden the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. To have Him is to have heaven's treasure chest. So living inside of you is gold, gems, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, the rainbow, of glory is in you. The cloud of glory is in you. The Christ of glory is within you. Let me tell you, if you got any more, if you were given any more, it would threaten the Trinity. It'd have to be a quartet. You've been given every spiritual blessing, all things in Christ. The favor of God, the blessing, glory, honor, and riches. The glory of heaven is operating in you. God says, I will not share my glory with another, but you're not another. You're one with him. He'll share his glory with you. He already has. So to you have been given these secrets, and whoever has a listening ear, whoever has an open heart, whoever has a passion and a hunger, like Pastor Catherine mentioned and I agree, this church is hungry. The people here tonight, you are hungry to come out on a Thursday night and miss some show on telly. You know, you, you're here instead. Thank God. But whoever has this listening ear will be given more. Ha! I love that. I love God's math. If you have, you get more. I like that. Give me more, baby. I'll take more, Jesus. Let me have it. And what is it we have to have to get more? Revelation, an open heart, a listening ear. And you will have an abundance of revelation. Things beyond your present experience. Mysteries. Jaw-dropping. Heart-stopping. Say it to me again kind of mysteries that you don't get the first time. The revelation of heaven cannot be... Listen, revelation is so full, words can't contain it. English is a poor container. Revelation doesn't fit inside of these containers we call words. Only pictures. And when you begin to learn the language of God, which is not Hebrew, it's not Greek, it's not Aramaic, it's not English, the language of God is picture. God speaks in picture. A picture is worth a thousand words. So when God communicates with his people, he comes with a picture. Behold, the Lamb of God. Does that not give a picture? So Jesus taught this revelatory pictorial uh, method. 
And I believe in the last days, the great awakening, the great move of God that's imminent here in Australia, it's going to bring a tsunami of revelation from heaven. Every move of the Spirit brings fresh revelation. It's not just a buzz, a shake, a laugh, a giggle, and a falling over. There is a revelation attached. And, of course, the revelation that came in 1994 and that, that little church there at the Toronto airport vineyard at that time, it was the revelation of a happy God, the joyous gospel, a God that isn't mad at you. He, he's not mad or sad. He's really glad, and he's included you into his heart, and the Father's love is for you. And from that realm, we've, we've seen the Shulamite story of the Song of Songs. We've seen the inner healings and the, the ministries that have come forth out of that great move of God that, his, that, uh, that took place uh, almost 20 years ago. I was at the epicenter there many times. But this coming awakening is not going to bring a revelation. It's going to bring revelation. Daniel said that in the last days, many are going to go here and there, and knowledge will increase. You didn't get it. Many are going to run, uh, many are going to go here and there, and knowledge will increase. Revelation knowledge is going to increase. The church cannot exist without fresh manna, fresh bread, daily bread, piping hot, put some butter, put some honey dripping off of it. And to eat cardboard and plastic and dead, dry doctrines that instill guilt-driven theologies inside of us, it leaves us empty. But when a kiss comes on us and the spirit of revelation like wind blows over our heart, we get romanced into truth. We stumble into truth. We get raptured, haha, into truth. You look at him long enough, the twinkling of his eye, you'll get changed. So God has wired you. You are made for intimacy and secrets. You long for mysteries to perceive the language of the Spirit. There is a knowledge that has been given to you that is ready to flow through you to the nations. And why we're emphasizing this weekend this revelation realm is because you are made for this. And uh, it's like God has waited until now to uncover the books. You know, it says the books will be opened. God also said to Daniel in the last days, the books will be opened. Yeah, 66 of them. They're getting opened. One by one, God's unlocking the book of, uh, uh, of Song of Songs. He's unlocking the book of Isaiah. He's unlocking the revelation of the scriptures. He's even unlocking the book of Revelation which I may accidentally backslide and talk about tonight a little bit. I mean, if we're talking about Revelation, there's like a whole book of it. It's not the book of secrets. It's the book of Revelation. It's not the book that you can never understand. It's the book that you're meant to understand. It's the unveiling, the apocalypsis. It's the, the uh, taking what's been in hiding and bring it out into the open. That's what the entire book is about. And it's not the revelation of Antichrist. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. I suggest you read it through. Tell me how many times Antichrist shows up in that book. How many times did Jesus show up in that book? Woo! It's the unveiling of Christ. You won't go blind if you read it. It's really good. Now, let's take mystery number one, and I want you to write it into your notes. The mystery of the wisdom of God. Jesus says, the secrets of the kingdom are yours. And here is a secret of the kingdom you need to process. It's called the secret or the mystery of the wisdom of God. Beloved ones, mysteries, uh, uh, wisdom is, is a mystery. Proverbs says there's a, a, a path where the, the falcon's eye has never seen, where the eagle has not yet flown. There is a realm of mystery of wisdom that has not entered into the hearts of men except by the Holy Spirit. There is a supernatural wisdom the church has to have to make it through the difficult 
traumatic times that are ahead. And the greatest thing you could get is wisdom. It's better than education. It's better than money. To have wisdom. If you had wisdom, you'll get money. If you have wisdom, you got the education you need. It comes from God. And I'm so delighted in, in offering to you the book of Proverbs starting in September. It'll be published, and I'll send as many as I can get down here. We may actually start a printing company, uh, a publishing company here in Australia to help with the, uh, the uh, Passion Translation. I've actually uh, got a, an Aussie uh, editor. She may be here. Uh, I, I don't see her, but uh, I've got an, uh, an Aussie editor who's going through my translation to make sure any spelling or statement that is blatantly American gets changed into something a little more, what's that word, Aki or Aka, yeah. So uh, whatever I can do to bring the Australian church, uh, you know, to cooperate with the Spirit, to bring the Australian church into a, the, the fresh, fiery revelation of God. So in studying the book of Proverbs, bro, it's all about wisdom. You know, do you know that... Are you sitting down? This is going to fry your motherboard. <laughs> Lady wisdom. Wisdom is feminine. Lady wisdom. Okay? That's hurdle number one for all the blokes. Here's hurdle number two that's a lot higher. Not only is wisdom feminine, but lady wisdom is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lady Wisdom. And you got the Bible all figured out, don't you? Well, let's take, you know, Proverbs deals, it's all about two women. It's all about two women. Interestingly, so is the book of Revelation. It's all about two women. And the two women of Proverbs is the promiscuous harlot and the virtuous, what's been known as the virtuous woman of Proverbs 31, the Mother's Day sermon that hangs on every woman the responsibility of getting up at 4 in the morning and fixing me breakfast. And, and, I mean, wait until you hear what it's really about. So what these two women represent are two systems. You have, uh, you have the religious system, the abomination of denomination. I mean, the, the, uh, the, uh, you got the religious hierarchy which is a promiscuous woman that wants all the young men to come and lay down in her uh, bed and get her anointing and get under her covering and, and get her credentials and make sure you, you teach what she gives because her husband is a long ways off. He's a far off, see? And it's a system without the bridegroom. It's a system of religious bondage that will take anointed young men and women and bring them in into her, her bed. Which to lay down into that mess. Now, the other woman of Proverbs, Proverbs 31, it's not a Mother's Day sermon. We forgive you, pastors, if you taught that on Mother's Day, but please don't do it again. The, the Proverbs 31 woman, the word virtuous is chalil, and chalil is a Hebrew word that is warring. It means valiant. It's a masculine term almost always used for male warriors. I'm talking about decapitating blood and guts men that are ugh, killing the enemy. That is the victorious bride. It's the radiant church. It's the bride of Christ rising up in the last days. She works with her hands, five-fold ministry. She works with her hands. She toils in intercession. It says she embraces a nation and plants living vineyards. She adopts nations and carries them in her heart, and she'll birth churches in those nations. It's the last day's triumphant bride rising in the house. Now, Revelation has the same thing. It has the harlot Babylon. Mystery Babylon, which is one of the mysteries that we'll get to, and, and I'm ahead of myself, but the other woman is Revelation 12, the woman that is a virgin. There's two virgins in the Bible, one named Mary, the other is the last day's church. Paul says, I labor to present you as a virgin to Christ. So the last day's church, the radiant bride of Christ, will be a pure, chaste virgin offered to the Lord Jesus, Okay. The bride of Christ, men and women from the nations that love Jesus with all their hearts, we are that bride. Well, the woman clothed with the sun, 
you're clothed with the sun. The glory of the sun shines through you. Radiance, brilliance, glory, dignity. And the moon is under her feet. The moon is the occultic powers of witchcraft and darkness. It's always been a symbol, a symbol, uh, emblem of, of uh, occultic uh, dark powers. And the stars, it's Joseph's dream and fulfillment in Revelation 12. And guess what? She gives birth to a man-child company. She gives birth to a, a, a she gives birth the Flying Eagle Company. Oh, man, I'm telling you, someday when I grow up, I want to be able to teach this to you. I want to go as, you know, go right off the cliff, uh, dripping with honey. We'll go right off into the realm where you'll never see the Bible the same way again. But I'm telling you, the book of Revelation is all about two women. You're either a part of the, the Babylonian harlot or you're part of this glorious, radiant, victorious bride of Christ. Well, the mystery of wisdom. You need wisdom. Tell the person next to you, you're not a wise guy, but you need to be. Okay. Here it is. Go to 1 Corinthians 2 real quick. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6. 1 Corinthians 2. This chapter is uh, your homework. Uh, thou shalt read this chapter tonight. Uh, read it a time or two and really process what's in this chapter. Thou shalt. In grace, thou shalt. For example, verse 1, when I came to you, brothers, I didn't come with eloquence, superior wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony. Do you see the word testimony? Does anybody have another translation other than testimony? In the most ancient manuscripts, it's the word mysterion, the mystery. I proclaim to you the mystery about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear. That's a good, you know, Pentecostal faith confession there. Uh, I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise, persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. So that your faith may not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature. Now, the, the word mature is, is among the initiated, among the perfected, among those who have been deeply moved upon and, and uh, given hearts to hear the word of God. God wants us to grow up and be mature. He wants us to be those that eat the meat, the strong meat of the word of God. You've been sucking milk for so many years, and, we, and you know, some of us are even eating our veggies, but... God wants us to eat the meat of the Word of God. The meat is the revelation you don't get just by the surface. It's not processed. It's not packaged. It has to come by personal digesting and uh, chewing upon this thing until you, you get it yields the revelation. So we speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age. Now, the rulers of this age are not kings, Parliament, they're not rulers of human beings. These are the dark powers. They are the powers that be. They are the forces over this planet. Paul's saying, I'm not bringing you the wisdom men gave me. I didn't get this in a commentary, and I'm not getting it by any other illegal spirit realm understanding, but I'm getting it directly uh, <clears throat> by God. It's, notice this uh, last phrase in verse 7. The rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. That actually means the dethroned powers that rule. Rulers that have been dethroned, but they haven't got off the throne yet. They're still pretending to rule. The rulers of the nation are sitting in front of me right now. They're not in parliament or in the houses of government in your nation. They're the body of Christ. We legislate. We are the judicial champions. We are the kings of this earth. He's the king over kings. We're the kings he's king over. 
We have been created for dominion, to rule, to exercise leadership. And the word proverb, by the way, is the actual word mashal. And mashal is a homonym, has two meanings. Mashal means pithy saying, short pithy. Yeah, we know that. But the other meaning is to take dominion, to rule with power and authority. So the book of Proverbs are for the kings of the earth to take process and the the simple will become wise the wise will become wiser still and we will have uh, brilliant strategies for leadership and for exercising the authority that we're to have here on earth so proverbs is a lot more than a dusty book of the old testament that is uh, somewhat irrelevant to a grace-filled life today no it is very relevant to those that are going to be groomed for uh galactic authority how's that Anyway, never could do that. So the dethroned powers, and we're to, you know, finish that dethroning with them. Verse 7, no, we speak God's secret wisdom. You see that? God's mysterion, wisdom that is a mystery. We speak the wisdom of God hidden in a mystery. That's how I would translate it, my first draft of this verse. I I would translate it, we speak the secret wisdom of God hidden in a mystery. Paul's apostolic, the we are the apostles. Apostolic ministry is uh, to steward the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians 4.2, write it down. You can look it up later. 1 Corinthians 4.2 says, we apostles are stewards of the mysteries of God. Apostolic calling comes by direct divine commissioning of God himself. And when he calls and commissions his apostolic servants, he puts in them a communication system. He puts in them the realm of the prophetic revelatory realm. It's impossible to be an apostle and not have revelation because we steward the mysteries of God. And may we become faithful stewards. Paul says we are to be faithful stewards of those mysteries. So... Paul, the apostle, is saying we are revealing to the church of the nations. We're giving them mysteries hidden in the wisdom of God. I'm going to ask you to go on a quest for wisdom. Forget about your distractions and your momentary mess that may be in your life right now and understand that you have a calling to enter in to the revelation secret wisdom of God. You're made for this. Listen, my friend. You're going to dry up. You're going to get crusty, dusty, and old, and cranky, and nobody's going to like you, and uh, you're not going to like anybody either if you don't have fresh revelation operating in your life. It's amazing how wineskins get so brittle, and that new sweet wine can get so stale. But when living revelation, like a fountain, flows through you, it's a living fountain. It's rivers of revelation. When it flows through you, it's always fresh. There's something new, something real, something tangible that comes. So Paul is saying that this wisdom, secret wisdom, hidden in wisdom, secret mystery hidden in wisdom, is destined for our glory. That's a... That's a like underlying portion of this passage. There is a wisdom that's destined for your glory. You're not going to get your destiny without this wisdom. You are not going to touch the glory without this wisdom. It's destined for your glory. This wisdom is accessible today. Christ is the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1.30. God made Christ to be to us the wisdom of God. Do you know the wisdom of God is a lot wiser than any man in this room? Man would never come up with a plan of hanging God on a tree and letting him bleed to death and making that salvation for all mankind. That would not have come from the mind of man. It's a secret wisdom that God, from the beginning of creation, when he spun out galaxies from his fingertips, he knew that he himself, the the creator, that he would come and be suspended between heaven and earth, riveted to a tree, and bleed, and sacred crimson love would redeem the hearts of men and women with power 
and, and their salvation, sozo, would be so complete that it would bring healing to their bodies, it would bring wholeness to deep within, and our minds would clear up, and, and our whole life would be changed by one sacred drop of blood. That is a lot wiser than men. The cross is the foolishness of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. What looks foolish, God in his foolishness said, I'm, I'm going to die for my creation. I'm going to actually enter the very world I created. It's like the mystery of the incarnation that the, the transcendent God would, would actually enter his created order, his created world as a human being. God with skin on. What if God were one of us? And he came and manifested himself as an infant in a forgotten village, in a, in a forgotten stable. What a beautiful mystery. That's foolishness. But the foolishness of God is wiser than 12-step programs. It's wiser than your counseling program. It's a lot wiser than your, your doctrinal indoctrination and catechisms and all of your our, our stuff that men do. And the weakness of God is more powerful than men. God looked pretty weak when he bled to death, didn't he? He looked pretty weak hanging on a cross. So this... <coughs> This wisdom is destined for your glory. Does anybody want glory at Glory City Church? Is there anybody that really like that glory thing? It comes in the mystery of God. The word glory, of course, is doxa, and it can mean, it can mean among other things, brightness, splendor. So wisdom is for the brightness, the splendor, the magnificence, perfection, and excellence. Those are really nice words. I like that. I, I'm going to say them again. Brightness, splendor, magnificence, perfection, and excellence. That's what we're destined for when we enter into the wisdom of God. I want wisdom. I want it bad enough, I'll get up early for it. I'll choose him above the pursuits of this world because I want to enter into that destiny of glory. And as I grow older, now that I'm 36, I want more. I don't, look, why waste gray hair? If you're going to get gray, you might as well get wisdom, you know? So, this secret wisdom is ready for you. Verse 8, none of the rulers of this age, these are the principalities and powers. They didn't understand it. If they had, they would not have uh, crucified the Lord of glory. Notice his name, his title is the Lord of glory. Isn't that beautiful? However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Love unlocks the wisdom of God. Love becomes the key to the treasure chest of wisdom. Without passionate love, God will not waste pearls in front of the swine of a dispassionate heart of a selfish heart, but one that burns, burns with flame of passion to love God. God says, I will not withhold from my loving bride the wisdom you will need to establish my kingdom on the earth. I will give you divine strategies. Listen, if, if Jobs can make the iPhone, if Steve Jobs can put the iPhone together and give us iPads, holy God can give us supernatural revelation and technology that transcends all of this. Now, when I was taken up into the heavenly realm and I saw the treasure chest of wisdom and knowledge and I was brought into the repository, the, the room where it was all uh, cataloged and placed, I saw every science known to man. I saw every technology and things that haven't even been invented. I saw pavement, highways, roadways that generated electricity for cars. They needed nothing except to ride on the road and they would have energy to go. I saw things, I saw the doubling of the periodic table of elements. I saw, I believe there, is it 155 we now have, or 135, I forget. I saw a doubling of the periodic table. As the supernatural realm interacts with earth, it's going to, it's going to create entire new elements that are gonna be discovered that will release technologies to man. I saw zoology, botany, I saw science, astronomy, I saw, uh, I saw rows of books on one verse of the Bible. 
I say, take me back. He promised he'd take me back there when I was ready. That's a mystery. That's a sign will make you wonder. So there are certain things that the human mind has never received. It's like the frequencies that are in the air right in here that we don't hear, we don't see them, we don't feel them, but we experience them on our phones, radios, the, the media, uh, television, etc. They are the invisible waves and realms. And so is the wisdom of God. It surrounds us. Lady Wisdom shouts out from the, from the streets. You'll not just find wisdom in the hustle and bustle of every day uh, on, the, on the college corridors, universities, unis. You're not going to find wisdom necessarily there. You find wisdom before him on your face. Usually it takes repeated breakings by God, which we don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. It, it takes the repeated dealings of God. Yes, it's finished, but that finished work continues on in our lives as salvation is worked out through us and as God makes us willing both to, to will it, to desire it, and then to do it. God creates the desire, the want to, and the will do. He, he makes it happen within us. That's grace. So, Eyes don't get it, ears don't hear it, minds don't understand it. But God has this whole realm prepared for the last day's church. Verse 10, God has revealed it to us through Wikipedia, the Internet. How does God reveal this glorious wisdom to us? It's spirit realm. It's spirit realm. A and relationship is the key to revelation. So we must relate to the Holy Spirit to get the revelation he has. Now, the word revealed here, uh, if you circle it, it would be good. But the word revealed is the name of the last book of the Bible. It's apocalypto is the name, is the Greek word here. If you've turned over to your last book in the New Testament, it has the word revelation. You see, some of the secret wisdom God is unveiling has to do with the unveiling of Christ within us. But as long as we think it's about, uh, you know, monsters with ten heads and, and Antichrist and, and 666 stamped on your, you know, everywhere. Listen, 666 has been on you a long time. I'm sorry, your, your hands what you do, your forehead's what you've been thinking your whole life. 666 is the number of... Man, it's the number of man, and we've been living in that man realm. We've been living in the natural order. We've been living in the human, and God wants to unveil Christ within us. And in the last days, what minds cannot understand, ears can't hear, eyes can't see, God is going to unveil to his people. There are secrets coming. I've shared 1 Peter 1.5 with hundreds of pastors and to a person. They all are shocked because they never even saw it. But 1 Peter 1.5 says there's a salvation coming that hasn't even hit the earth yet. There's a salvation, a full salvation that is going to be revealed, unveiled, uncovered that the earth has no knowledge of yet. So if we don't even know what salvation is, my Lord, what about everything else? There's coming a depth of revelation deep enough to swim in. And it's going to bring the nations of the earth. It's going to bring the religious systems of the earth. It's going to bring the institutions of the earth down into a realm where only Christ will endure. Only Christ will stand. You're about to be baptized in the river of Kibar. Kibar, Ezekiel 1, the river of long ago. The Hebrew word for Kibar means eternity or long ago. The river of long ago. It is the river of revelation. Ezekiel was there at the riverbank. He was a priest at his 30th birthday. He was to be commissioned as a priest. Priests cannot enter into the priesthood until they're 30. So Ezekiel, he's 30. He says, it's my 30th birthday, and I'm by the river Kibar, and I'm waiting for God to, like, set me apart as a priest. But it won't happen. God wanted him to be a prophet. Besides, he was in captivity. There was no temple. There was no priestly order. So Ezekiel was baptized in the river of Revelation, and a whirlwind 
my, 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 this storm of glory with fire, lightning, wind, and, and a burning man inside of that whirlwind as it spins like what just hit the, you know, the U.S. that uh, it hit a place called Moor. It's what we've been saying for a long time, haven't we? You're going to get a lot more than you think, baby. It's coming, and I'm sure not making light of, of the tragedy and the uh, people just, you know, a state over from where my wife and I make our home. But, but Moore's gonna, not going to be able to describe what's coming. It's going to knock you off your foundation and catch you up into the glory of God. God is about to put his thumb on the fast-forward button of time, and he's going to accelerate the spiritual growth of a generation. He's going to move a generation from immature dysfunction. I don't know my identity. Don't know who I am. I hope I work this thing out. And he's going to put his thumb on it. And suddenly, the fire of God will be in your DNA. Sin gets knocked right out of you forever because it was already at the cross. And we get a revelation of Christ in us that burns through like the mountain of transfiguration, which is a prophecy of your future. And the glory begins to hover over Ezekiel. And this whirlwind, the burning man, and the wheels inside of wheels, which is Christ inside of you. Christ in you is a wheel inside a wheel. And this eyes of revelation are all over the gyroscope of glory, the wheel inside of a wheel, and, and the eyes of revelation glory. Wow, man, I'm just like zoning out here, guys. This is wild, man. Woo, woo. Spielberg and Lucas can't do this. And, and then the wings of the, of the four living creatures. You didn't know God had pets. And, and the four living creatures are four prophecies of the advancement of your life. Before God could ever decree judgment to the earth, he has to see before his throne the four stages of spiritual growth that he's doing on, in human nature. First is the lion that conquered you, the lion that mauled your sin on a cross. And like a lion, he says, Psalm 22, some Hebrew manuscripts says, like a lion, my hands and my feet. He was mauled there for our sins, the lion. Next is the ox, which is the servant nature of Christ in us. As we go from our salvation into servanthood and we serve the eternal purposes of God in our generation. And the third is a man. We stand as a man with wings and uh, glory. We, we, we are the living creature that is actually the face of a man until finally we're the flying eagle company. We are that flying eagle. Now, I hope you're not too tired to get this, but when Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, that can be translated, he is a living creature. Paul is dropping the hidden mysteries of wisdom. He's dropping a gem right in front of you, and he said, listen, my friend, all those pictures of living creatures in the Bible, that's who you're going to be. You're going to progress in those four faces, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Peter, Paul, and Mary. They're going to come. You're going you're gonna to advance in your journey into Christ-likeness through those four stages. Everyone in this room is one, in one of those four right now. I'm going for the Flying Eagle Company, baby where we lift up on eagle's wings, we soar above pain, persecution. You know, knock me down, beat my teeth down my throat. I want to get back up and grin without teeth and love you right back. That's what I'm talking about, where we become a people that are so full of the spirit of life that the spirit of death cannot touch us. And the fear of death no longer operates in us. I mean, what are you going to do when a generation conquers death? That's the last enemy that's going to be destroyed. So I, I don't limit the work of Jesus Christ. I, I don't want to limit the work of Calvary. I believe we can conquer every single enemy, every single foe. And revelation is the key. It's the secret. The Spirit of God within us has these nuggets, these secret mysteries hidden in wisdom that when we take them and we eat the book, we eat the scroll, it burns in us and we become a living word. We become a word sent from his mouth that will not return to him void, but we will accomplish that for which he has sent us to the earth to accomplish. 
The word chosen in Ephesians 1.4 is eklegomai. The Greek word is eklegomai. And inside, hidden in that word eklegomai is the word logos. You have been chosen to be a logos. You are the word made flesh again. You are to be a carrier of the logos of Christ and bring a revealed message to this planet that nobody else can give. You are the poetry of God. You're the workmanship of his hands. Only you can reveal to Australia and the nations the message that you were created and pre-programmed to carry the good works that only you can do to bless the nations of the earth. So these wisdom nuggets, they come and we, we go, oh, Lord, and they set us free. Wisdom empowers us to live outside of the flesh-bound life and the, the, the laws of this planet. The law of the spirit of life is transcendent to the law of sin and death. There is a higher law. There's a law of gravity that will hold you down, but it seems like every few days I'm getting in a plane and going up to what? Uh, uh, feet, forgive me for using feet instead of meters, but I'm going up to almost 40,000 feet in these airplanes. The law of Propulsion is, is, has superseded the law of gravity. And so in the spirit realm, we do not operate in the laws of this world. Touch not, taste not, don't do this, don't do that. We have a higher law. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has given us a freedom from all of the tentacles of sin, all of it. So we soar. We are the flying eagle company. We rise above. Knock us down, we rise back up. The effervescence of Christ causes us to rise again. Jesus said, destroy this temple. Three days, I'll raise it up again. And he says throughout the book of John, which I'm now translating, he says over and over, you will not taste death. Hallelujah, it's a nasty taste anyway, yeah. We can be a people that transcend and go above. I'm telling you, the fast forward button is he's... His thumb is about to hit it right now. And in a swift moment of time, in an awakening that only God, the thunderclap, the thunderbolt of God that's coming to Australia is going to awaken a bride instantly out of her slumber, out of dead doctrines, out of religion and oppression of others. And we're going to rise up as a free people, loving one another, submitted to each other, honoring one another, and this agape community, this koinonia of the Spirit is going to be our portion. The wisdom of God is coming to the earth. An avalanche of wisdom is coming. Uh, you've paid a price for not having it. You have gone through a real mess in your life, a time or two. I know, I've, I read your resume. Uh, you have been through some stuff. And most of the time, it's because of a lack of living wisdom. Okay, let me, let me hurry on here. I want you to see in verse uh, 11, I'm sorry, verse 10, that the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit searches out these revelation secrets and reveals them to us. The word search can also be translated speak. So the, the Spirit searches out, but He also speaks out to us. And I'm sent by the Spirit to speak out some of these wisdom secrets to you tonight. So the Spirit will speak to us. The Spirit will give us wisdom, give us an unraveling of the secrets that men cannot perceive, but only God who knows all things has the ability to help us with. I'm telling you, there's so many dilemmas on this earth. Who's going to break poverty? Who's going to break the, all the issues of, of, of depression, discouragement? Do you realize one out of seven young people in our nation have attempted suicide? It's horrible. Eight, under 18 years of age. It is like this scourge that's coming, and it's in Australia. I just prophesied in the church I was in before this one, and I prophesied that God was breaking suicide off of Bribey Island. And that uh, as a sign that it was truly his word, that tomorrow, uh, and I, I called out a man who was the chaplain of the school, didn't realize it, and he's gonna, you're going to have a boy, 17-year-old, that's going to come to you, uh, and he's going to be suicidal. He's, you're going to help set him free, and he's going to lead a revival on your campus. That's a pretty clear word. Well, you can guess what happened the next day. It happened. 
God's going to do something. Suicide is, I hate it. God wants to set you free from that spirit of death. So that's, that's the wisdom. I could share a lot more about that secret. Let me, let me, uh, guys tired? You want to go to, go home? Dude, it's only 830. Let's go a little bit longer, all right? The second mystery is in Romans 16, 25. I'm going to call it the mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel. Romans 16, 25. Very last paragraph of the book of Romans. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past. The unveiling of the revelation, the unveiling of this hidden mystery is going to establish you. It's made known through the prophetic writings because God commanded it to happen so that all nations might believe and obey him. What a horrible word to put in the grace book of Romans, isn't it? Obey him. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. The mystery of the gospel is it's the beautiful treasure that has given to every believing heart all that God can give to a human being. It's like you don't just believe in Christ. You get immersed and inundated, drenched, filled, overflowing, exhilarated, ecstatic, electrified, glorified, justified, sanctified, baptized, galvanized. You, you get everything. When you come to Jesus Christ, when you give him your heart, he gives you eternity and throws in every other blessing on top of it. The mystery of the gospel is that you don't do anything. He did it for you. Man cannot work his way. Man cannot pray enough. I don't care how many times a day you pray. I don't care how many uh, days of the week you fast. There's not a work man can do to bring the mystery of the gospel to our heart. The transcendent grace that, that lifts us higher. Don't laugh at my poetic attempt. But years ago, this came to me. Do this and live, the law demands, but gives me neither feet nor hands. A sweeter word than this grace brings. Bids me fly and gives me wings. You see, the, the, work of the, the work of religion is you never know if you've done enough. you got to do this and you got to do that. It's a bunch of doo-doo. Religion is do, do. But in Christ, done. Done. Sealed. Sealed, written in blood. Forever covenant. It's a new covenant reality. It's written upon your spirit. And every blessing God could give a human being, he's given to you. You cannot take any more than you've already been given. We work it out. We, we activate it. We flip the switch. We unwrap the package. Of course, we activate these gifts, anointings, fruit, wisdom, power, and glory in us. However, it's already ours. You have it all. The weakest person in this room has the same amount as the most glorious apostle ever to walk the earth. Isn't that awesome? I mean, Billy Graham, Mother Teresa, and Candace. And you've got as much as any of them. You're so blessed. Tell the person next to you, you're, it, it, you are so blessed. You're so blessed. You've been given so much. I'd love to talk more about the mystery of the gospel, unwrap it further to you. But I'm going to take you to the third one. The third mystery 
is the mystery of Israel and the fullness of the Gentiles, the full number of Gentiles. Go with me to Romans 11. This is a mystery that only God can make clear to you. May the Holy Spirit bring light into your eyes tonight. Romans 11. This is a very fascinating verse, and it's going to springboard into some um, interesting thoughts. 11.25, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mysterion. Now, if the Holy Spirit says, don't be ignorant of this mystery, then we should learn it. We should process it. Israel has experienced a partial hardening or a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles or the nations has come in. Let me unwrap this. God has judicious, judicially blinded and hardened the Jewish heart. Now, not every, uh, that doesn't mean that Jewish people cannot come to know Yeshua, Messiah, because they do, don't they? Thank God. But generally, for the most part, as you try to minister to our beloved friends among the Jewish people, eyes have been blinded. God did it. So they're double blind. They're blinded by birth. And they're blinded by judicial activation by God himself. And God has a purpose for this. Don't be conceited, it says. Don't you for a moment... In this room, any one of you think that you're any better because when the full number of the Gentiles comes into the body of Christ, God's going to flip the switch, lift the veil, and Israel, all Israel, look at verse 26 and 27, they will be saved. There is going to be a global awakening among Israel. So in a, in a, in a way, you can thank God that he has shifted his attention to Aussies. And the Western world and the nations of the earth. He loves the nations. There's not a people group on this earth that he doesn't love. But the, the, the Jewish people have a covenantal relationship to God that has not been fully abrogated. It's not been uh, lifted fully. And this God of covenant, the faithful God who's made promises to Abraham, his sons, that faithful God, if we are not faithful, he remains faithful. He will still keep his part of that bargain. And though he may have divorced, you know, uh, Gomer or, you know, he may have divorced uh, for a season, Israel, don't worry. Uh, he believes in remarriage. As I was pastoring our church, I had an anointing. Every single year, I had multiple couples who had divorced that I ended up doing their remarriage. They got back together. It was just bizarre. Our church had a grace on it for marriages and and uh, like I prophesied divorce-free zones over our church family, and people begged me to marry them. They wanted me to, you know, do their ceremony and get us to pray that blessing over them. I mean, even people would join our church so that we would marry them. I mean, and some of them weren't even Christians. They just wanted to get us to marry them. <sighs> God loves Israel. It's his beloved. But in part, they have become hardened so that you and I can come to know Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, God is doing the math. And when the full number, it says fullness in your translation, but, but what that really means is the full quota, the full number. He's watching the sheepies come in. He's watching the lammies come in to the kingdom. All right, come on, Aussies. Come on, Americans. Come on, Brits. Come on, Kiwis. Come on, all you aboriginals. Come on, come on, people group. Come on, come on. He's got the gate open. But when that final... Last one that he knows, the full number has taken place. Bam! He's going to turn to Israel and awaken them. He's going to lift the veil. Israel will be saved, and we will enter into a, a whole new era of that one new man reality. Now, here's the inferred information. Here's the implied data. I don't know if you've processed, if you've had time to process this. Jesus isn't coming back for a long time. Okay? 
Unpack your bags. Unpack your bags. Get your rapture bags, unpack them. Put your clothes back up. Get your toothbrush back in the, in the holder. Put things away again because he's not going to be here for a while. He will not come back until every tribe and tongue and people and nation have heard and received the gospel of the kingdom of God. The thing that motivated my princess and I to go to the indigenous people group is we wanted to see one less tribe that had to be brought in. We wanted to be a part of going to the unreached, those that had never heard the gospel, because the, the gospel of the kingdom is that every tribe and tongue, there was a tribe and a tongue that had never heard there on the border of Colombia and Panama, and we had to see them reached. We were on our way to PNG, but the Lord sovereignly steered us to go into that tribal village. And I can tell you, by the grace of God, by the loving kiss of heaven, there is a tribe of people that are going to be in heaven with you that... 30 years ago, had no hope. And the gospel has pierced their heart. Now a functioning revival church with signs and wonders and miracles has broken loose there at the frontera de Colombia y Panama. Well, your idea of the second coming needs to change. How far can I go with this, Pastor? Can I take a few minutes and then? Okay. Okay. All right. What is the name of the last book of the Bible? Let's start there. What does Revelation mean? Cricket. It's getting quiet in here. What does Revelation mean? Unveiling. Who gets unveiled? Christ. Okay, so the last book of the the Bible is called the unveiling of Jesus Christ. The word apocalypse, apocalypto, that word means to come out of hiding. It means to be manifested. So the last book of the Bible is Christ coming out of hiding. Christ being manifested. I'm trying to start simple. Wait till you start getting into the, the rainbow in the clouds, chapter 4. The door that opens. He stands at the door and knocks. And a couple verses later, the door opens and it's heaven inside of you. Same door. The book of Revelation is the road map for the last day's church to come into the fullness of the unveiling and manifestation of Christ in a corporate people. It has very little to do with the Middle East and a lot to do with the middle of you. When I take people's Antichrist and rapture away, they really get mad at me. They want to stone me. You know, I'm involved with starting churches and apostolic networks. Uh, I'm the, the uh, U.S. director for HIM, just recently given that title, but... but In helping churches, I plead with the pastors, please be careful what you say in your doctrinal statement. Don't put in there anything other than Jesus is coming back. Because we don't know. It's the mystery of his coming. If the first coming, all the Bible guys missed the first coming. They missed it. The only people in this planet that received the revelation of the first coming, they had to get it by angels, stars, dreams, and manifestations of supernatural signs. The only way they could get it. The innkeeper didn't get it. I mean, none of them got it. Micah 5.2, it's right in front of them. Well, so is the whole book of Revelation right in front of us, and we don't get it either. So my, my starting point with eschatology is that Christ is not coming back until certain things happen. And one of them I just read. The fullness of the Gentiles has to come. So missions has to take place. We have to go to the nations. The myopic concept that it's all about us, our, our wonderful, lovely church. Thank God for churches. I'm, churches are us. I'm totally wrapped into churches. 
But the church is global. The ekbalo is coming. You could say, what's ekbalo? Anybody heard of ekbalo? Nobody's heard of ekbalo? You have, okay. Okay, one person. Now, in a measure, I was the one that shared this with Lou and some of the others. But ekbalo, 57 times in the New Testament, is translated, cast out demons. One time, it's translated, same word, it's translated, pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers, cast out. So I got up in front of our church, 2,000 plus people. I said, I cast you out to the nations in Jesus' name. <laughs> Go! Win the world! And now what Jesus said? Isn't that the Great Commission? Of course we need training. Of course we need preparation. Of course we need the maturity of the Spirit. But don't lose the vision of the global harvest. The full num number, the fullness of the Gentiles have to come in. So God's, what God is doing right now is not centered on Israel. What God is doing right now is centered on the nations. But don't worry, it's going to flip. And it's going to switch. And, and it's suddenly, you're going to be going to Israel for revival meetings. You're going to have awakening meetings in Israel. Lined up outside uh, the city of Jerusalem. Streaming in. The nations are going to come to the glory streams as awakened, Hebraic, glory-filled people just full of Jesus. Isn't that awesome? It's coming. Now, all the nations are dear to him, so don't. Don't read into in, any of that any more than what I'm saying. Well, there's eight things that have to happen before Jesus comes back. We have to see the full number of Gentiles come in. We have to uh, preach the gospel of the kingdom of God, signs and wonders displayed to the nations. That gospel has not yet been preached to all the peoples of the earth. Third, we have to come into the unity of the faith. Ephesians 4.11, the fivefold ministry will operate until... That word until is key, until we have come to the unity of the faith. You are not united to everybody in the row you're sitting on, let alone the whole church coming into the unity of the faith. So there's a move of unity that must come to sweep over the bride of Christ that we become the loving uh, body where we connect as a family, as a coordinated body, uh, not handicapped, but coordinated body, loving God, uh, operating as one. It goes on in Ephesians 4.11. We, uh, we have to, what else does it say? We have to come to the, the unity of the faith. A perfect man, a mature man. The perfection of Christ has to be seen in the church. Jesus is not coming back for a juvenile bride. He's not coming back for an underage girl. He's coming back for a radiant church. A perfected, mature bride that is equal to him in every way. I get in trouble when I share it, but I don't care. I'm a, it's the truth. Jesus calls us his equal in Song of Songs four times. He says, my sister, my bride. They usually have laws of, against that. My sister, my bride does not fit in one sentence. There's got to be something there. As I studied it out, I asked God for revelation. He showed me the Hebrew word sister is the word equal. My equal, my bride. The equal bride has to rise among the nations. There must become the equal counterpart to Jesus Christ. If God tells you not to marry the unbeliever and be unequally yoked, he would not want his own son to be unequally yoked. You are the equal yoke partner to the Son of God. You have the personality profile of eHarmony, G-Harmony, GodHarmony, JHarmony.com.au. God has researched your personality profile and says, I like that one. Mm, I like that one. Yes. Mm, mm, my bride. And he, you are the perfect match for the Son of God. How does that make you feel? You are not uh, anything less than the beautiful, radiant, perfect, look-alike, spirit-filled, anointed, soon-to-be enthroned bride of Jesus Christ. He has robed you, crowned you, and throned you already. 
robed with a robe of righteousness, crowned you with the golden crown of kingly anointing, and enthroned you on the throne at the right hand of God. Those realities have already taken place. You have bilocated. You've already bilocated. You are here and there at the same time. How's that for a mystery? How come we want to make everything so simple? Everybody gets it. I, Jesus, everybody left when he taught, and they didn't get it. His own bros didn't get it. His own mates didn't get it. They walked away saying, what did he mean? And then the, another Ephesians 4.11 says that, that until the full measure of the stature of Christ is seen in the bride. So I don't have time for the others, but there are a lot of things that have to take place before Jesus Christ comes back. We hasten the coming of the day of Christ when we yield to the Holy Spirit. Every time you are full of the Holy Spirit and yield to his kiss, yield to his touch, you are hastening the coming. You are becoming more like Christ, and as we corporately become more like him, he's going to come back for a mature bride. 2 Peter 3.12 says we hasten the coming of the day of God. If we can hurry the coming, then we can hinder the coming. And a dysfunctional, divided, argumentative, doctrinally split uh, bride is going to hinder the second coming. What are you going to do when the revelation comes to you that the second coming is in our hands? We hasten it or we hinder it. So unpack your bags. I think we may have a day or two left. The mystery of the book of Revelation will be unveiled. Jesus Christ is coming in the clouds, right? Not on the clouds, in the clouds. Eight times in the Bible, clouds are people. He's coming in the clouds, a corporate expression of Christ. People have accused me of saying, you don't believe in the second coming. I absolutely believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. He's coming in his bride, not just for her. And until he's seen in the Revelation 12 giving birth to the man-child, until there is the corporate expression of Christ being born again on the earth, the fullness of the mysteries of God have yet to take place. So the book of Revelation, just hold it loosely. You know, hold your opinions and your thoughts about that. Hold it loosely. I'm sure you have Revelation. I'm sure you have a good knowledge of it, et cetera. You, maybe you've taught it, and that's wonderful. Thank you. But, but just realize there's more coming, that this tsunami of revelation that's about to hit the nations is going to totally transform how we look at 66 books of the Bible, how we look at Jesus Christ, how we look at one another, and how we look at the revelation, the unveiling of Christ. And if it operates in fear, if it genders fear in you, if it causes you to lose sleep, uh, you want to go hide and plant a garden somewhere and just, you know, go to the outback. You know, Alice Springs, here we come. Well, we need you right here in Brisbane. The glory is going to hit the nations. There's an awakening coming. You say, well, we got gay marriage. We got all these issues. We got sin rising like a dark tide. Don't worry. The light of Christ is going to shine on you. A move of the Holy Spirit is coming to Australia, and it's going to unveil the mysteries of God. I've got, what do I have, seven more that we'll share with you, mysteries of uh, Christ in you, the mystery of destiny that's going to operate in your life, the mystery of the ages we're going to talk about. Oh, there's so many beautiful things in the Scriptures that he's unveiling um, you know, I, my hand just lit up with fire. I think I'll pray over everybody that wants it. If you don't want it, that's just less I get to go to bed earlier. But if you'd like to receive prayer tonight, honestly, I'd like to, to just pray. Is that all right, Pastor? That Oh, Saturday, all day, I'd like to share about the seven spirits of God and the seven anointings and where they come from, how they operate, seven mantles, seven graces that come from your life. It's in the Bible three times, Revelation 4, Revelation 5, Isaiah uh, 11. Uh, you see the seven spirits of God. 
And that's a mystery, isn't it? And you need more of the Holy Spirit. Don't look now, but you need more <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'd like to, to walk us through. And what I will do on Saturday is I will pray seven times over everybody. I did this in Korea, hundreds and hundreds of people till my hands wore out. It was unbelievable. And they, they want me back, I think. But uh, so Saturday, it's worth coming. And what's that? Oh, that's right. Thank you. And, and I want to include on Saturday, this will bring some of you out just for this. I want to include probably in the afternoon a session or a portion where we do Q&A. And you can just hit me with your best shot, baby. Something you, you know, you're wondering about, you're thinking about how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. I will give you the biblical answer. I don't know. <laughs> I have the gift of wisdom. I don't know. So you can ask anything you want as long as you give me the option and luxury of saying, I don't know. <laughs> But we'll have a great time. Saturday is going to be a lot of fun, a little bit more personable than just me preaching and teaching at you. So uh, it'll be good. Let's, uh, let's line up here. Hey, how are you, sweetheart? You are so wonderful. You know that? Oh, just take it. Oh, Jesus. More, more, more. How would you like to laugh for the next three days? Oh, take it. More, 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 more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ha, ha, ha. Designated driver. <laughs> Whoa. More. Oh. He loves the way you serve him and love him. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Something's about to blow up right here. I feel it. Something's going to explode. I need some, some blokes to stay with me, please. <laughs> Fire. Fire. <laughs> more. <laughs> Fire the Holy Ghost. Ha. More. Ha. Go to heaven. <laughs> Take more. Take more. You too, baby. <laughs> oh. Get it. Oh, get all you want. Take more. Break it loose right inside of him. More, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy. Bang. Wow. Holy Spirit. Oh, more. Whoa, it's getting crazy over here. Man, I'm getting dizzy. Jesus. Oh, get her up one side and down the other. Thank you, Lord. You still here? Oh. Go to heaven. Go get it. Oh, go get it. Ah, Come on, baby. You got riches and glory waiting for you. There's a lot up there in heaven waiting for you, sweetheart. Oh, my, 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 my. I see Jesus inviting you to come in and come into the blood-sprinkled pathway. We have access, total access by the blood of Jesus. Rise up, oh, fair one. That doesn't mean just get out of bed. It means rise up right into the heavenly realm. More. Go to heaven. You go to heaven too. You are the Gemma of his heart. Oh, far above rubies, baby. More, more. Borota, borostata, ibirika poronda, boroda, boronda. You are a hearing ear, says the Lord. I'm going to begin to whisper in your ear and give you secrets in the night, says the Lord. More, more, more. Thank you, God. Real breakthrough is coming. Financial breakthrough is coming in your life. Major, major. Oh, God. Plenty to spare is coming to you. More, more, more. Ah, more. Shabaronda. Ibidi Kelporonda. Borostata. Boborota. More. Oh, more, more. Oh, ah, let her give it away to the nation someday. More. Oh, there we go. Ready for liftoff. More. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yeah. I see your home getting transformed by the glory of God. Something's going to be happening when you go home, and it's good, not bad. Whoa, 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 whoa. Borota, Skabaronda. Ibiria, porota. Brostata, taboronda. Didikididianda. Boronda, baronda. You have come seeking me, says the Lord. You have come hungry tonight. You have come with a curious heart and an ear open to my truth. So I am going to blow in your ear tonight. I'm going to blow in your ear and give you revelation secrets about why you walk through what you walk through. 
and where I'm going to take you in the next three years. I'm going to work in you a wonder that's going to make anyone that has ever come against you, it's going to make them shut their mouth because I'm going to do a miracle and a wonder through you, says the Lord. More, Jesus, more for Norway. Ah, oh, Norge, yeah, the kingdom of Norway. More, God, ah, for the nations, revival for the nations. More, Lord, for this precious Shulamite lover of God. Give her more. Give her more. More. More, more, more. I see uh, the Lord winning a great victory in your life, even physically right now, in your body. And I see uh, in your thoughts, in your mind, some things that have been a little bit strange. Uh, you're not strange, but the thoughts that enemies tried to put in there, uh, you're, you're wonderful. But, but the, the Lord is really uh, judging. He's judging the enemy that's come against you tonight in Jesus' name. I saw, also, I see a healing in uh, your abdominal, abdominal area. How about that? I'll learn to speak English someday. Jesus. Fire. There it is right there. Fire of God. More, Lord, for my daughter. Give her more. Oh, oh, for my little girl. Give her more. Oh, more. More, more, more. More of the glory. More destined for the glory. Give her more. Spirit of revelation. Spirit of revelation and wisdom. More, Lord. Thank you for my friend. I pray anointing on her life. Give her more. Spirit of wisdom and revelation. Drench her. I see your eyes being bathed with light. Light of God coming. Revelation insights coming. I see you helping many people in the ways of God. Lord's going to bless you. He's going to fill you. Your home is going to be a used, it's going to be a tool of evangelism. God's going to use the place you live. He's going to fill it with his glory. And people are going to come and study the word of God. They're going to learn the ways of the spirit. They're going to learn the truths of heaven, what heaven reveals. Heaven's coming into your house. A portal will be there even as you go home tonight in Jesus' name. More, Lord, blessing, fill, anointing of the Holy Spirit. Fill, fill, fill. Shoboronda barata. Give her more. More. Oh, oh, Jesus. Give her more. Double. Double. What what she thinks she can handle. Double it, God. Double. No, triple it, Lord. Just triple right now. More. Oh, oh there it is. Whoa. And she thought she could take it. Oh. Oh. Jesus, more, Lord, for your servant. Anoint her. God, give her boldness. Give her the boldness to preach. My, you're a preacher, says the Lord. You got to preach in you. Give her more, God. Barabaronda. I see spiritual sons and daughters coming around you in Jesus' name. There they are. Oh, mighty ones who are going to come and lift up your hands and your arms and say we're with you. Ma, mom and pop, we're with you. Give more, give more, more. Breakthrough in every area of their life, especially the financial area. Give them the sweet honey of revelation. Give them the honey of heaven. Let it drip from the high places of the cliff. Let it fall all over them like it did Samson and brighten her eyes. More, Lord, more. More of the Holy Spirit. More. Receive it. That's it. Just receive it. Put your hand right here on your heart if you don't mind. There you go. Holy Spirit. Just say, I receive you, Holy Spirit. I want all of you, Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. Espiritu Santo. Espiritu Santo. Borota barasta borosta. Brostata poronda. More, more, more. Uh, back pain. Somebody right over here with some back pain. In Jesus' name. Is it you, darling? Do you have any pain in your back? Okay. I didn't mean to not pray it over you. So you you have pain in your back. Would you like to like leave without any of that pain? You're going to leave with none of it. Okay? Not a bit. <laughs> there it is. Receive it right now. The fire. There it is. Fire of God. There it is. Falling right on you. The fire of God. Jesus. More. More. Jesus, increase it. Increase the anointing on his life. More God. There it is. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. 
Thank you, God. Are you Aaron? Okay. Lord, let him be the resurrection Aaron's rod of glory, budding forth with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. More, fill, more, bubble up Holy Spirit. Give him revelation. Give him dreams in the night. Let him become like a Daniel. Lord, as you reveal mysteries to him. More, God. Oh, how you love him, Lord. Oh, how you love Aaron. How you love this wonderful man. Thank you, Jesus. You look the, like the guy in the Jesus movie. Oh, Lord. He just looks like you, Jesus. Oh, touch your lookalike right here, Jesus. Get him good. Oh, my. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord. Fill him. Fill him. More, 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 more. Oh, a lot more. Down all the way into his very spirit being now. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, fill her more. Fill her. I prophesy over you, you're going to hear from God in the name of Jesus. You're going to start hearing his voice. You're going to hear the whispers in the night. You're going to wake up and there's a voice speaking to you. And at first it's going to be quoting Bible verses. And it's going to put you on a discovery of what verses God is speaking to you. But as you look up those verses and memorize them, you're going to start growing in the hearing ear and the seeing eye. God is going to begin training you in the prophetic revelation. He's called you to a higher place. He's called you to help train a generation in the realm of the Spirit. There it is. More. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Just go to heaven, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. More. Boronda barata. Borostata. Borata. Oh, yeah. Give it to him, Lord. Smear it all over him right now. More. Oil of your presence. Oil of your fragrance. More. Jesus. Let him be a male Shulamite for Jesus. Ha <laughs> ha. Passionate lover of God. Passionate lover. Let him find that identity, God. More of the flame of heaven in her. Oh, I'm sorry. More of the flame of God. <laughs> More. Ah, More. <laughs> Fill, fill, drink, 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 drink. Oh, borota, borosta. Bubble up, bubble up, bubble up. Pow. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Don't you like the sound effects? Oh, yeah. Phew. Jesus. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh. oh, I love him too. He's awesome. Oh, woohoo. Thank you, Jesus, for your glorious grace kiss over her right now. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is intoxicating what he does. <laughs> Healing power all over your body right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. You treat her very, very carefully because she belongs to the king. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my mate, Lord. Fill him up, fill him up more. Haboronda da barostanta. Aboronda daka. Skiri borosta. Abundanta boroskata. Deorosta. Deorosta barota. Ikira borosta. Adoran borota. Deoboroskata de de brikia. Taborosta. Tadobara. Tirianda Ibros tigriata da boroska, iborokata da boronda. I speak to blood sugar. I speak healing into your body right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. More, more. I break premature death off of you in Jesus' name. There's many, many, many more years ahead for you. Uh, the Lord has need of you in Jesus' name. Fill him. More, more, Lord. Ah, he loves you. Oh, my, he loves you. I think you're his favorite one. <laughs> my, here I thought I was all along. I think you're his favorite. My, Jesus. 
Oh, he likes everything about you. Especially the way you look at him and love him and worship him. Jesus, touch your equal right now. The radiant bride, fill her up, fill her up. Take her into the heavenly realm. Thank you, Jesus. Getting a lot of words about blood sugar and diabetes tonight. So if that's you, and if I don't call it out over you when I walk by, tell me, and I'll, I'll make sure I pray. Break that off of you with the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Before the year is over, says the Lord, I'm going to do wonders in your life. I'm going to do wonders in your family, and I'm going to reverse some things that are going the wrong direction, says the Lord. Be patient, entwine your heart into mine, and watch me do miracles. While you rest and pray, I will work and convert. I will bring great glory upon you and upon those that you love. Because you have prayed and you have cried out to me in the night season, my heart has been moved like, like I was moved when Lazarus died and I wept over my beloved ones. So I am moved by your prayer and by the sorrow that you have walked through in recent years. And today I'm decreeing over your life that this is the year of a great reversal. Watch what I do uh, between now and the end of this year. And this will be the best Christmas you have ever had in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Seal it to her right now. Take her right into heaven. There it is. More. More. Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. More. Holy Spirit, fill your precious daughter, Lord. Oh, look at her, Lord. Look at this lovely daughter. How she loves you, Lord. How she caught calls out to you, pours out her heart to you, Lord, lives for others, not just for herself. She has become a cup of blended wine, Lord, that you drink from. She is the pleasure-filled garden of your heart. She's the one, Lord, that has ravished you. Here's another favorite, Lord. Here she is. Look at her now, coming up out of her wilderness, leaning on her beloved. Fill her right now in Jesus' name. Fill, 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 fill. Oh, yeah. Sweep her off her feet, God. Woo, the romance of Jesus. Oh, you've never been romanced till he comes into your life. I'm telling you. Jaw dropping. I mean, sock dropping. It's like, whoa knocks the daylights right into you. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Fill her up. Fill her up. More, more. The satisfying pleasure of your heart, Lord. Let her life be a poured out goblet of blended wine for you. More, Lord. Jesus. Oh, Baronda. I see a lot of your friends are going to be influenced by what he does in your life. Miracles are coming into your life. There's somebody with neck pain uh, kind of sharp neck pain right around here. Uh, is it you, darling? You got neck pain. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Yep. I could even tell you right where it is, right in there. I release healing now in Jesus' name. Healing fire of God. Healing fire of God. More. I pray into her spine, Lord, from her nose to her toes. Let the glory fall down. Let the glory fill her up. More, Lord, more, more. Let every joint, every uh, disc in her neck, let it be healed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, there's also someone that has, uh, like, what do they call that on their forearm? Uh, yeah, is that, do you have any tendonitis? Carpal tunnel, that's it. So if I, if I come to you and that's, uh, a word for you, then make sure I pray for you in that, because God wants to bring healing to you. Thank you, Jesus. Neck to, okay, Father, touch my son in Jesus' name. Are you coming Sunday? You're going to be here Sunday? Okay, the Lord is really going to do something special in your life this Sunday, so don't let the enemy keep you from coming, okay? Something really awesome is going to happen to your life on Sunday, okay? I know that's a selfish prophecy in a way because I'm speaking Sunday. I know that. But 
Honestly, something is going to happen with you on Sunday. Well, what about right now, Lord? Just get him right now. Fill him up. Fill him up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo! Oh, there it is. Thank you, Lord. Healing's coming into your body right now in Jesus' name. A couple of things you could use healing for. Okay. Diabetes, all right, blood sugar. Okay, yeah, I speak that over you. Actually, it's a generational thing in your family. I break it off in Jesus' name. And you know what I found, sweetheart? What's your name? The most beautiful name? That's almost like Jesus. That's a beautiful name. You know what? and the, the, you know, the spikes that come of blood sugar. I see that happening. Even today it's happened. I break it off right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, wouldn't it be great? You don't ever have to do all that stuff anymore to regulate that God just becomes the faithful lover of your soul. He becomes the, the faithful healer to you. Oh, I'm telling you. He's given me the secret of, of healing diabetes. Yeah, it's the prayer, what I whispered in your ear. It, it, that's the secret of healing diabetes. He showed it to me. And, and we're just seeing hundreds of people set free, getting healed, blood sugar. It's a scourge in our culture uh, 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 of blood sugar, pancreatitis, and stuff like that. So you're going to be free in Jesus' name, okay? I'm not telling you not to do any medical work or anything like that, but just know that from tonight on you are free in Jesus name one more time Lord kiss her with the kisses of your mouth more sweep her off her feet into the cloud filled chamber of the trysting place where lovers meet into the love seat into the mercy seat God show her the beauty that she has in your eyes show her the radiance that she carries as she comes before you, Lord. I break every lie that would have been spoken over her, even the lies that she's spoken over her. And I thank you that her smile is going to be a kilometer wide. In Jesus' name, the joy's coming back, the bubbly joy that you had as a little girl that's going to come back in your life. Uh, I, you even had a nickname about that joy and bubbling. It's going to come back. The bouncing joy of Christ is going to come back to you. Father, touch my friend. Touch my beloved friend right here. Fill him right now. More, more. Uh, I see gifts of wisdom coming into your life, fruits of wisdom coming to you. I actually see, uh, like, fruit inside of your chest right now. Like I'm getting an x-ray. I know what's inside you, bro. It's fruit. It's the fruit of the Spirit of God. There's the maturing of that fruit, the ripening of the work of God is happening in your heart. Fill him up, Lord. Give him more. Jesus. Man, it's really sweet up here. Really good anointing. I'm coming, folks. If you're standing there, please don't, don't leave early because I'm going to come and pray over you. Something really awesome is happening. You feeling that? Man, I'm feeling it too. We may just start laughing, you and me together. Borota, shabarota, brostata, barota. More. More, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And I see, I, I see some miracles happening in your home situation as well. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Take it right there. Right there. Miracles are coming. Jesus. Lord, more for your radiant bride. Look at her, Lord. She's your perfect partner. You're equal. Here she stands. Glorious as the sun in its strength. Shining as bright as the moon. Lacking no good thing. You withhold no good thing from those that walk with you, Lord. More. Fill her up. Fill her up. More, more, more. 
Shabarota, Borostata, Brika Porostata, Porota, Pariki, Boronda. That's it. The Lord is really teaching you the spirit realm. He's, he's showing you how to get into the spirit and get out of the, the mind more. Help her to drop right into that place, Lord. There it is. Yeah, drop right in. More. Drop into the spirit. There it is. Jesus. Oh, my. Yeah, feel the fire? I feel it now. See, when you when you get into the spirit, you, there's the fire. You touch the flame. It begins to burn because the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. So you feel the flame. <laughs> when you get, oh, yikes. Just pray over her, somebody. Shabbat. Okay, I break it off of you in Jesus' name. No, let's let's see it ended right now. Yeah, just bless her and keep praying over her, please. Let's have some ladies come and pray over her. Are you okay, princess? You all right? Okay, just keep praying over her. She she hit pretty hard. <laughs> more, Lord, more. Give her more. Lord, I pray full healing. I command in the name of Jesus by the ascension of Jesus Christ into the heavenly realm. In that name, exalted above every name, I command and release by that authority full healing in your body. There it is. The light just bursts right over you. It's like a like a bursting of a light over your head. Now let it spill into her bloodstream. Let it spill into her arteries cleansing her arteries more healing of her heart healing of her heart and the complication that's causing any high blood pressure there it is in Jesus name <sighs> glory is there need of healing Jesus touch my touch my daughter right now more I'm coming guys hang on <sighs> They keep multiplying over here. I don't know what's happening. Fill them up, Jesus. There it is. Glory, glory, tons of glory all over you, destined for glory. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> Take it. More for my sweetheart. Give her more, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. revelation you've given him, Lord, I pray that he would be able to go into the house of God and get his own house. God, I pray you fill him with your glory. Fill him with more. Have favor with him. Touch him right now. Let him grow and increase in favor with God and man. In Jesus' name. Okay, here we come. I'm coming. Oh, yeah. There it is. My. Get under the waterfall. Under the waterfall, the healing waterfall of your glory. More, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. I see you helping troubled young people. And I also hear you saying, but I'm not able to really give them what they need. And the Lord says, I will give them what they need. You open your mouth and speak the words, and I will bring the blessing into their lives. More, Lord. Let her spark revival. Let her spark spiritual awakening wherever she goes. More, Lord, for your servants. Fill them up. <coughs> Fill. Fill them. More. Thank you, God, for the washing and cleansing of the Holy Spirit, the renewing of the Holy Spirit. I just see the Lord, like, just soaking and softening you. Like, like you're going to be just soaked by God, almost like Queen Esther, like a male Esther, huh? perfumed in the glory, soaked in his presence. More. Thank you, Father. More. More. I break sleeplessness off of you, and tonight you're going to sleep the best you have in a long time. coming. Touch my 
daughter, fill her up right now. Fill her with your Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, by the authority of the triune God, and by the mistress of the sacred name of Jesus, by the glorious mysteries of the seven spirits of God falling upon you right now, enlarging your heart to receive more, filling your spirit like a wind filling a sail. More healing in your back in Jesus' name, healing in your back and spine and joints. There's some degenerative issue happening right now in your back. I speak life and restoration over that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Inject her with the spirit of life and power in Christ Jesus. More. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the tension that's coming in her shoulders, even causing headaches, I break it off in Jesus' name. <laughs> Healing in Jesus' name. Receive it. And Lord, I speak to the pancreas. I command in the name of Jesus this pancreas to begin to function properly. The blood sugar would be regulated by the divine immune system you placed in her body. I speak activation to restore that immune system, to cause the cells of her body and the blood sugar levels to be supernaturally brought into divine order. There it is right now. Whoa. Glory. Glory of healing power over you in Jesus' name. More, Lord. More for your daughter. See how she loves you, God. Fill her up. More. Fill her with your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you know everything about her and you love everything about her in Jesus' name. There's also a like a, a twist or something in your back. The Lord's healing that. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I could touch it, but I'm a gentleman. I won't do that. But, but uh, the Lord's healing your back and spine from uh, the occasional pain that comes like a twist in your back. It's being healed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Fill her up. Thank you, Lord, that she's a teacher of your word. She's going to teach the revelation of the Spirit of God, the mysteries of heaven. Give her more. Baptize her in the spirit of revelation. More. Give more, more, more. There it is. Jesus. Kisses of God all over her. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Touch your servant. Fill him up. I, I see a, just a huge restoration that God's done in your life in the last few years. And you were a pretty nice guy before that. But some uh, wonderful things are taking place, even as I'm praying right now, happening in your life of restoration returning and, and healing. Um, you're uh, just a remarkable comeback story. Everything about you is you don't quit. You're coming back. And the Lord's going to raise you up. He's going to anoint you and use you in this coming day. Blessing of heaven is going to rest upon you. I also see you praying over people with these hands. And you're going to have gifts of the Holy Spirit released through you to others. Father, in Jesus' name, touch her right now by the power of your spirit. There it is. Wow. You are a tender-hearted woman. That's wonderful. Just give her more. Give her more, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. More, Lord. Oh, there it is. Take more. Receive it. Receive more. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a real rich anointing on your life. I, I wouldn't be surprised you just have been in some really anointed meetings or something. There's something all over you that's good. It's all good. In Jesus' name. More, Lord. Boldness. Give her boldness. 
Oh, give her boldness, God. Let her be the lioness of the Glory City Church. More, more. Let her roar out of Zion, the glory, the glory shout. There it is. Triumph and victory in her life. More, God. More. Whoa. a major breakthrough tonight in your life. Uh, thank you, Lord. I'm just going to break off of you right now what I see. I just see it just as the residue of, of a past that is trying to stick to you and and uh, affect you, and I'm breaking it off right now. It's going to uh, manifest in the way you uh, sleep and the way you dream and the way you uh, think. It's going to have immediate effect in your life right now. In Jesus' name, I break it off. There it is. Fill him. Fill him, God. Fill. Fill. More. More. Thank you, Lord. He's buying oil from you, Lord. He wants oil in his lamp. Let him be burning bright. Not burning the wick, but burning the oil. More, Jesus. I see dreams coming to you as well. The supernatural realm of dreams. And God speaking to you. Thank you, Lord. Increase that. Give him eyes that see and ears that hear. More. Jesus. More for my daughter. Give her more. Increase. Lord, let her find an unusual delight in being alone with you, Jesus, and being quieted by your spirit. Jesus, I hear the Lord just say over you that I'm going to bring you victory after victory, breakthrough after breakthrough, as you do nothing but come quietly before me. It's like stand still and you will see the salvation of your God. More, Lord. Yeah, see, you're going into the spirit. I feel it. You feel that fire? That's the, that is the spirit within you. we got to learn to get into the spirit and not in our soul. Our soul is emotions and feelings and, and confusion. But our spirit is, is the burning flame of heaven, burning within. There it is. More, Lord, for your servant. Fill him up. Fill him with the revelation of heaven. Give him more. Let the light shine bright upon him. Give him revelation knowledge. Increase it. Increase it. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling like it may be you or someone else right here by you, but there's uh, like a little bit of sinus pain. Is that you? Okay. Do you mind if I pray for her? Is that okay? All right. Do you know her? Like, oh, put a ring on a baby. Awesome. How many years? Hot diggity. Man, you married up. Man. That's good. Stay with her. Isn't she awesome? She, you really are awesome. But don't let it go to your head. But the, let it go to your heart. <laughs> the awesomeness of your daughter, Lord. Fill her up right now. And I just release healing flame right now. I just love that. The words of knowledge. You're feeling it right now going in. Yeah, it's still a little bit of pain there. I'm going to keep my hand until it's gone. Really? Oh, I believe it. Supernatural strength. More. Take her in Ezekiel's whirlwind. Give her a ride in the chariots of God. <laughs> Show her the flames of the eternal realm. More. More. Your throne with a river of fire beneath it. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Healing. 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 Jesus. More. Thank you, Lord. It's almost like you've had some problems sleeping because of uh, you got to sleep a certain way or something to, to really get it to where you can breathe well and, and sleep soundly. And the Lord's going to bring a change in that to where uh, he becomes your rest. 
Show her, Lord, your healing power right now. Man, he loves you. He loves you so much. You know that? I just, I, the reason I love words of knowledge and healing, and I'm sure Pastor Catherine's the same way, it's because it, it's his love for people. It's like I get to feel just a little bit of his love coming through for his people. More, more, more. Uh, there's a, 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 a So I release it to you and to you that you will see the salvation of God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, more, Lord. More for your dancer. <laughs> Give her more. Oh, uh, yeah. Just dance on the sea of glass. Go and get it. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for my friend. Fill him. Supernatural wind of God. Wind of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. I see uh, uh, another nation. God's going to put in your heart another nation like that victorious church of the last days. You're going to adopt a nation, embrace a nation. God's going to give you grace to love the peoples of the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Fill them up. Supernatural grace. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have the Passion Translation? Okay, I'll, here's what the Lord told me. I'm going to give you a copy. So whatever one you want, just take one off the table and you tell them that I said. The Paul, yeah, the letters. That's the one you're supposed to have. So take that. Isn't that awesome? I, I love these words of knowledge I'm getting tonight. It's really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, he just loves you. You are. You bring him so much joy. Oh, he has little secret names he calls you in Jesus' name, doesn't he? Little secret names that... Oh, take the kiss right now. Take a big, fat, sloppy kiss from heaven. <sighs> Fill him up more. Man, he really likes you. You are so special. Don't ever doubt that. Don't you ever doubt it. <sighs> In Jesus' name. Fill him up. Double bubble. Double bubble. Give it to him. Baba borota baroba. Ababoborosta para. Little Sydney girl. Oh, thank you for coming. What did you fly up here? Oh, you're so special. Thank you. Just to be here. Oh, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your precious, precious daughter that loves the nations, loves the revelation of the Spirit, loves the Word of God. She got on a plane from Sydney to come up here. Oh, Jesus. Surely goodness and mercy. I, pr I pray Psalm 23, and I believe that verse has significance over you. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. I need to start quoting it in the Passion Translation. Ah. <laughs> uh. Goodness and mercy. Pow, pow. Double pow. More, Lord. Bless her. Bless her. Are you sleeping in the church tonight or you got a place? You got some places? Okay, good. All right. Good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Fill her up. Come on. More, more, more. Oh, spoil her this weekend. <sighs> more, Jesus. More. You're living fire all over him. You're living fire. Bless this wonderful man, Lord. I feel God's heart of love for you, that you've been a tender-hearted son, and you've always, uh, you've not always known a father's love. But are, are you from this church? Are you from here? Yeah, but are you going to be here Sunday? Okay, good, because there's something God's going to do in your heart too on Sunday morning. Okay, if you can come Sunday, I mean Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock. 
they got a guest speaker. So you should come and hear him. <laughs> Tell him, there it is. Oh, God. Oh, get him. Namaste. Ha. Oh, yeah. Go to heaven. Rip right through the sky in Jesus' name. supernatural glory realm. Let him know his destiny like never before. Let him be encouraged. Lord, let there not be one single day for the next 100 years that he is discouraged in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There it is. Fill him up. Let him be a bubbling fountain of encouragement. over her Psalm 4 it says now I lie down and rest in peace so let the peace of God that transcends man's understanding well I, I just getting lots of stuff um, uh, I, there was a phone call that came recently that brought trouble and pain to you and I break that uh, that, uh, you know, having to shake that off of you, I shake it off right now. I break it off and the discouragement that came from that phone conversation. And the Lord is going to whisper in your ear the truth and lies will never prevail. And I just speak peace over you in Jesus' name. I prophesy Isaiah 58 where it says you will be a well-watered garden, a spring that never fails. You will be the fountain that springs up and blesses many people. Uh, you're, because you've touched the poor and because you've given your heart for the needy and for those that have less than you do, God is going to restore and bring back to you uh, blessings, both natural and spiritual. Your home is going to be filled with blessings beyond measure in Jesus' name. There it is. Peace of God. for the glory, girl. Give her more, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The supernatural realm is being opened up to you right now. You know, this school of supernatural, are you a part of that? Have you thought about it? Okay. You might want to get into it because... God is really, I can tell the, the people I prayed for that have been in that school. Isn't that awesome? And you're, you're perfect the way it is. You don't, it's, you're wonderful. But I think he wants to give you something in that school. So uh, yeah, don't let anything hold you back. And I, I probably have $2 to help if you need, if you need tuition money. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Fill her up, 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 up. Up more, more Jesus. You are you really are like seer prophetic type person though. You really have the supernatural all around you. I'm, I'm getting dizzy standing next to you because you you carry something. You really carry like uh, whew, you access. You you're learning how to access the heavenly realm more. Fill her, Lord. Fill, fill. And you watch what God does in the next few years in your life. Thank you, God. To say you're going to have dreams and visions is a massive understatement. 
You're going to have heaps of glory, heaps of visitations. Some of them you won't even be able to talk about because people are just going to say, stop, we don't want to hear about all that because it's going to be almost endless revelation coming into you. So, Lord, I anoint her in the name of Jesus. The kingdom of heaven pour into her the secrets of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. More. Lord, I pray you'll give her favor at work where there's been opposition, even uh, people coming against her. I break that. And I pray that you'll have favor. Favor will be upon your life. In Jesus' name, favor opens doors that look like they're shut for promotions, etc. God's going to open doors because of favor that comes on your life. In Jesus' name, more for my daughter. Fill her. Fill. Wow. <laughs> you too. You've got the spirit realm. Yeah, go right into the chamber. Go right into the chamber. <laughs> more. Fill, Lord. Fill. Fill. Healing in your body in Jesus' name. There it is. More for my son. Fill him up, God. Take him right in to the celestial, cloud filled chamber room of glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God.
everybody else wants to sit around and have a Bible study and he goes out and wins a city, let it be. More, more. Let it be. More, God. More. More, more, more. More fire for evangelism. More fire for evangelism. More anointing. I prophesy over him. There's going to be 50,000 converts, young adults, 50,000 in the greater Brisbane area. And some of them will be other ethnicities, as you well know. And God's going to bring it to pass. It's going to happen. <laughs> there it is. More. More. And I also see a move of unity that is going under the radar of, of the big dogs in the town, in the city. There's a unity that's starting to percolate and happen in your generation that isn't top down, it's grassroots. It, it's up, it's from the, you know, it's like from the, the weakest all the way up rather than the, the top uh, guys down. And uh, you are already in the middle of that and it's gonna increase and intensify. And the Lord protect him from all the politics of that, protect him from all the religious spirit of what that means. But Lord, spawn a great unity movement let there be such a, 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 a glory. You know, there's something coming. I see it now. Is it uh, Easter Fest? Is that it? Uh, and Oh, that's right. I did have that conversation. So I'm, I'm not trying to act like I don't know anything about it because I do remember Easter Fest at Toowoomba. But there's something coming with you <laughs> and that right here in Brisbane as well. You got something really big coming by Easter something really major citywide, and you're going to be shocked at who participates and how many civic organizations <laughs> as well as churches line up and say, are you kidding? We've, this is why we're on earth, is to do something like this. More Lord, raise him up as a leader. Father, thank you for this anointed pastor. Thank you, God, for the revelation of the spirit that's already within her. Increase it. Let that river become multiple rivers. Let it go all the way throughout Australia. I see you going to Perth. I see you going out to the uh, Western Territories, is it? The Western Australia. I the, <laughs> that that area is going to be lit because of you. A better word is going to be drenched because of you. Uh, it's not that you don't carry fire, but you carry the fragrance and the oil and the rain. It's like where you go, rain falls. The reign of the Spirit comes. And I, I really see a major impact of, uh, of Pastor Catherine on that state in the coming days. And it will be sovereign. Uh, it's finished, so we don't have to do it. But I'm telling you, God's going to open that door for you. Major, major, like a tour almost of going to multiple churches to bring the reign of God. You are going to be known as the one who carries the rain, carries the, the anointing. Like uh, John Arnott carried a mantle, you're going to carry something here for the nation. You're going to carry it, and uh, the states of this beautiful land are going to be blessed because you have set foot on their territory. Thank you, Lord. More. Shokaporonda. Shoborota. Give her favor with governmental leaders, uh, church leaders, with uh, those that... Uh, are considered the players uh, all the way uh, from Sydney to uh, Darwin, and Perth, and Melbourne, Adelaide, all through the, this the beautiful nation, this paradise nation. More, Lord. Thank you, God. <laughs> Increase it. I'm not prophesying you won't go overseas, but I see that Australia is such a burning call on your life that that uh, there, there will be trips that will actually have to be uh, uh, put in second place to what he's doing here. And uh, you're still called to the nations. You're an apostle for the nations. But there's such a torch you carry and a refreshing river. You, you bring that desert blossoming like a rose. You bring that uh, into churches and into regions. So you're going to be in demand. And I still see Australian television interviews, book signings. I see opportunities that are appropriate and uh,
joyful. They'll be coming to you as uh, the year progresses. And Lord, we do pray that you'd open up the right doors in the U.S. and into other nations, Europe, uh, even um, South Africa, every English-speaking nation, Lord, let them know about Catherine Barnala and her ministry and the reign of the Spirit that falls and the calling of her life more. Thank you, Lord. So I just release that over you in Jesus' name. More. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for awesome catcher man. Jesus, get him good. More, Lord. More of your Holy Spirit. More of your fresh fire in his life. Fill him up. Fill him up. Uh, you, you've got, there's more to you than meets the eye. And what meets the eye is wonderful. But there's even more than that. And I see the Lord uh, in the next 10 years, you mark it down by 2023, you're going to look back over the last 10 years and you're going to be shocked at how God has used you without a title, without, you know, without uh, anything that man wants to boast in. But the Spirit of the Lord is going to use you and raise you up. You're going to have insights. John 5, 19 is going to be an important verse to you. The revelation of heaven and what you see the Father doing is your mandate. And uh, as you step out and begin to do what you see in the spirit realm, what you see the Father unveiling, then you're going to have great victory. Uh, wow. Is there a pain in like a, almost like an elbow? It would be your right here. Is it your right? How about that? I just feel that. It's like hurts every once in a while. And Lord, I just pray healing. And man, he loves you. See how much he loves you. He gives me that revelation. I interpret words of knowledge as, as love kisses. You know, so kiss him, God. Just smack him good. <laughs> smack him with a healing fire. <laughs> oh, bubble up, bubble up. Bubble, bubble, bubble up. More. Give him more. Give him more. Oh, yeah. Healing in his arm, elbow. It's almost more like a tendon than it is elbow, but <laughs> heal him right now. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I, I, I see you being radiated by God. I've never felt this, but I feel like radiation going through you. If I didn't know better, I would say he's cursing any cancer that's trying to come on you. He's breaking it off. You know, that he's just nuking you right now. That's awesome. <laughs> so get ready for a long life cancer free in Jesus name. I don't care what your family line may, may have. You're going to have a long life and you're going to be cancer-free in Jesus' name. More for the mighty one. More, God, for the champion. Fill him up. Thank you, Father. Never forget this man, Lord. He means a lot to you and to your kingdom. Chosen from eternity. Chosen to be your carrier of glory in the last days. Let him become your flaming one. Let him become a fiery witness of Jesus wherever he goes. Uh, I see you, uh, you know what apologetics is? Apologetics is like helping people sort through their issues of why they can't believe in Jesus. I, you're going to have a gift, and if you'll just like Google it or, or get some help from people, there's books that could really help. But I'm telling you, you're going to have such a brilliant way of answering people's objections to faith in Christ. You're going to really become... Uh, a, a, a real gifted apologist for the kingdom of God. I see you on university campuses. I see you uh, with uh, college and, and like that age group helping them come to faith in Christ. And it's not just preaching. It, it's answering and unraveling these, these knots inside their head of why they can't believe. You're going to say, oh, 
but you need to do this. You need to think this. You need to understand that. And the Lord's going to help you. He's going to put the word of wisdom in your mouth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for my son. Fill him up. <laughs> Fill him with the glory. Fill him with such glory, Lord. Boy, I feel that. I feel that. Just bask in it for a moment. Thank you, Lord. The light of your glory. In the light of your glory, all of our fear, all of our doubts, all of our cares, they fly away. Woo! More. Concerns about finances, gone in Jesus' name. Wow. More. More. Thank you, Jesus. I speak into his thoughts, Lord, over his, his mind and spirit that you'll bring such a cleansing, glory, power that all his thoughts reflect Jesus in every way. Make him a heavenly man. There it is. More. Jesus. Fill. Fill him up. Fill him up, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God's never, ever, ever going to give up on you, ever. Huh. Are you kidding? He's got such great plans. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're hope-filled, life-filled, expectations of destiny being fulfilled. So dreams and prayers that you've made, don't give up. God's going to hear your cry, your heart's cry, going to answer the deepest longing of your heart, things that you haven't even told your friends about. The Lord knows those thoughts. He reads our every sigh, our every tear, and he's going to answer the longing and the cry of your heart in Jesus' name. <laughs> there it is. Wow, that's a good word. I'd like that one. 